Hello. Hello there. Hi, Steve typing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was putting the, so people didn't have to use their finger and count how many sevens it was. I added the five times seven into this one as well. Man, that's bright. Okay, it's winter in Seattle, so. All right, so I'm hoping Sajay is going to join because Shiwe and Sajay have been in overall been busy with the um, end to end. I think let me just check here. Actually, you know what? When I dialed into Zoom, it didn't ask me to enter the code. It asked me, but. Uh, is that the first time? I, I don't, no, I don't know. It's so complicated. You can get URLs that include the code as well. But um, you just clicked on them. I can't tell because it's just like a gooded kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, it does say password in it. So maybe. Yeah, I think you might have the URL with the password nice. in that case, which is kind of convenient. <laughs> Kind of convenient at the same token, kind of defe defeats the purpose of password. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all a bit <laughs> weird. All right. Uh, so let's hope folks can join. Uh, let's see. HackMD. And let me ping Sasha. He was scrambling to get things working. All right, uh, let me start with kind of setting context on it. Notary MB2, I think it was in this one, generic lookup, yeah, here we go. All right, let me share my screen. Okay, so basically what we've been doing, um, doing a bit of fill, but this is the right context. Okay, this is what happens when you don't get a, an agenda out early, I guess, so it's only fair. Okay, um, so he's been working, we've basically been trying to get, make sure we can get the persistence discovery and uh, you know, signing a discovery model, getting in and out of the registry. We know we wanna evolve the registry APIs a little bit more, but this will get us closer. So what we've been working on was basically in the, we also wanted, sorry, um, we've been working on the NV2 client but we wanted to show what this experience could look like with the Docker CLI, assuming it would be the Docker CLI in this case. So we were taking advantage of the um, plugin model. Uh, apparently you can write a plugin with a bash script, which was kind of convenient for mocking up. Uh, so that's what we've effectively done. And I feel like I'm doing the, the vamping thing while the, the person behind the stage is getting ready for their act because I'm really clearly dependent on Sajay here to do the demo. <clears throat> so basically what we wanted to do is, let me just pull up. Our Have you got a link? Sorry, can you link to that? The, the yeah, sure. Love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where do I do that? That's, I don't know why they bury this up here. Um, chat, there we go. And to be fair, was this the change? So there's a couple of different changes 
there's the distribution changes also. And I think it was this one. So basically what he's doing is creating a temporary structure which looks like this here, where we're basically storing the config object. So while we, I know people want to drill into the details here on uh, how we're persisting it, I kind of look at this as, hey, we've got some fake walls up that kind of give us a feel of what the bathroom looks like. Pay no attention to whether the walls will actually hold as do we like the, the feel as the next level of the sketch. Um, Okay, hold on. Now it's time for me to look behind the curtain and be like, hey, are you coming out or not? So give me a second. All right, we'll go to the, the back channel communications. Um, And let me pull up. So what we were trying to do is basically say, look, let's pretend this was in the Docker CLI to kind of get that experience because we, and the NV2 client knows how to sign and validate, but it doesn't do any push or pulls. That would kind of be in your native experience. So what we were doing, let me just find this here. was doing this demo script, which I'm going to paste up here in a second. Uh, where would I paste that? Hey, Sam. So basically, we wanted to, there's the Docker trust API. And we actually didn't obviously didn't want to say Docker NV2 because that would be kind of silly to have to have a version there. So we've totally cheated. And I'm not suggesting that you guys would even implement it this way. But we just said, look, there is a, a Docker notary API that if you enable that when I do um, push, and actually to be fair, it's, so here's the same. Basically, you do Docker build. And you give it a, a signature, uh, sorry, a tag like you would normally do. Then you would say Docker notary sign, and you can sign this tag with, there he is, okay, with this cert. Hey, Sajay, tell me when you're ready. I'm just kind of doing the, the prelim walkthrough. Um, and then because I've already enabled this, so that's why I say I could probably say it this way. Because notary is enabled, that when I do a push of that tag, it would push not only the image, but the signature as well. Uh, you shouldn't really have to enable it because like if you don't sign it, it won't, there won't be anything to push anyway. Well, there. So is the, as so as this is what I was wrestling with. So is the theory, like, if if there's a signature, we just arbitrate. Well, how, which signature do you push? I guess if you have any signatures, you would push. Why? Yeah, would... yeah. I mean, I mean, is it... maybe it was the pull scenario that we needed it. Maybe uh, Saji, do you remember this conversation? I'm trying to remember what we debated here. Were you still scrambling to get it going? Yeah, uh, the pull makes more sense. Saj, I can see you in the call, but I can't hear you. He's probably still compiling. Okay. <laughs> <We'll get him. laughs> I can see the performer. He's walking towards the stage, but he's not ready yet. All right. So let's keep vamping. Um, so that's a good question. I think I'm trying to remember how we came up with why we did it enabled versus something down below. So the idea, and we definitely wanted to make it simple so that um, the whole idea of pushing signatures between registries should be, should just work. So, 
if I pull and push, whatever I pulled would pull all the signatures related to it and push them as well. All right, you ready, Sajay? I think I might be ready. <laughs> Do you need me to vamp a little bit more? Let me, let me give you another minute or two. Yeah, let me just okay. see if, um, <laughs> I don't want to waste everybody's time just fumbling on the keyboard. All right, it's, it's still early for the, the dev species. Um, the, uh, all right, so then on the poll, in this case, uh, how did I do this? Sorry, hold on. Oh, I see what we did. So we're starting to merge in some of the key validation scenarios. So the idea here is I've got a, a brand new ephemeral client, right? There's nothing on it, nothing up our sleeves. So if notary is enabled, that when I do a Docker poll, um, because it's enabled and there's nothing on the machine, this would fail, right? Because it basically says, hey, you've got notary enabled, I'm pulling this thing, you've got no keys, this thing is signed, so you know, no, no, no love. Um, now, if I get the key and we're ignoring the key acquisition model for now, this is part of what uh, Niaz and Ian and others have been working on. So let's just say somehow the key got on the machine. In this case, I'm just using Azure Key Vault. Could be you know, AWS, Google, something Key Vault. I just get the key on the machine. And now if I do a Docker pull, because uh, I've got the Acme Rockets key. I mean, yeah, that, 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 there's a big amount of hand waving there. Like how, do you, how does Docker know about a key that you got with AZ Key Vault get key? It's in the lo right location. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's the behavior you want. I think you have to, you probably have to be a bit more explicit about. Oh yeah, keys, definitely. The keys I want to actually use, not just keys that I happen to have lying around for, for other reasons. <laughs> Found some keys, as long as they fit the lock, what's wrong with it? I have a bunch of keys in my my, my window over there. Um, but here, here's, but let me go a little more deeper to, to not just laugh at it. The theory that we're doing for the you know, incremental model is there is a key store somewhere on the, on the machine. There's an expectation of where keys should be. I don't know exactly what that is. I'm looking for the experts to say where that should be. The, and there's a couple of different policies teams should be able to implement. The most simplest would be if I pull an artifact and it has at least one of the keys locally, because remember in our example here, we have three keys. Uh, uh, bring me to pull request, this one. Files. Uh, damn it, it's not this one. Which one is it? Um, oh, I know where it is. Hold on, it's in the docs. All right, so we'll, we'll just use this one for now. Or there's another one that shows the other keys. Where is that? Oh, it's in the requirements. That's right. I'm going to get these in sync. All right. You ready? Yeah, let's just go through it. And I think I can take questions and maybe we can, if you can uh, just capture the questions, we can then finally kind of go back to address those as well. Okay, let me just close out this uh, thought process. Sure. So, um, cause I think this is what you end up building for the demo. So Wabbit Networks has one key, Docker Hub says, oh, I certify that content. So now I've got a second key. And then Acme Rockets uses one of those two keys to decide whether to even pull it. And then after they run their tests and they, yep, this net monitor software is good for my environment, they add the third Acme Rockets key. So the thing, the most simplest policy that we've been thinking about, as you can say, that's just not good enough, is if the client has at least one key of the required of the signatures, it passes. That was the most basic policy we were thinking. Not is that valid or not valid? Or is that good enough is what I'm asking. Well, I think it depends on the signature layout. So it depends on if, because for example, in Tuff, it's not just the single developer signature you want. You want to make sure that you um, got all the way down to that developer signature correctly. Um, but as far as like, you know, people signing one file, I think, yeah, that should be, that can be 
um, configured down to one or up to like, you know, a hundred, depending on right. um, your use cases. Exactly. Yeah, we, we definitely acknowledge that there might be a policy that says you have to have at least two matching keys or maybe even two specific keys or, or things of that nature, but we wanted to get the basic flow working. Justin? Just because you were poking at this one, I just want to know. Sorry, say that again? That what do you, what's your thought on at least having at least one key um, as a most basic policy? So in this case, we have three keys that are available on the artifact. I have the Acme Rockets key on my local machine. So the most simplistic policy says as long as the artifact has at least one of the keys that I currently possess, it's considered valid. And then to Marina's point, with new policies, which we haven't gotten to yet, we could say not only that it has to be at least two keys. And I think it should probably be like these two specific keys too, um, because That's you want to that the correct people are, are signing it. But yes, in general, that sounds about right. Yeah, the, the thought process is because these are ephemeral client scenarios that uh, I'd only bring the two keys I care about. But to your point, I might be pulling two different images um, and image one has a policy that it needs keys one and two and image two for whatever reason has a policy it needs um, <coughs> key two and three. So even though it's got three valid keys on the machine, it needs to make sure it's the right keys for that particular artifact. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, I mean, the question is whether um, for, say, Docker Pearl, you want to be able to configure policies at all, or whether it just has some vaguely sane default policy versus doing some sort of complicated OPA policy, which probably doesn't make sense for why why do you say that well i mean well maybe you might want to i mean yeah maybe you want to point have the option to point to a specific policy i, know, I, I think I, you bring up a question is there should be some kind of policies engine that opa could implement but it shouldn't be dependent on opa yeah no i wasn't talking i, I just went over as an example but The question okay. is like more informational, straightforward thing that we could do just for, like as the case is where it's more exploratory, like perhaps like a docker is a divine need and you might not necessarily want to be and effectively with Docker, you might not even want to be in enforcing mode. You might just want to be. Sure, but you can just say out. Docker content, you know, sorry, uh, Docker notary false. Uh, that's the current, effectively the current setup is not very helpful in the sense that it does. Um, um, The whole thing it doesn't give you any any well, i'm trying to anyway. follow either that if i i either have it on or off and if i have it on i have the choice of policies so I, anyway well ideally i mean ideally we have it on Ideally, the same mode where you on, otherwise everyone will have it off all the time, as we've seen with Notary V1. It's, well, um, arguably, people had it off because it just didn't, it wasn't fruitful enough at the but, time. But, it, but I mean, if we're not doing a, to, a tofu model, then there has to be a way to get images before I've got any keys. But
All right, maybe I let you off the hook. Saja, you ready? <laughs> we can, because this is a great conversation. Yeah. But it's I kind of like, how do we manage policies? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring up our starring act. Saja, the stage is yours. All right. Um, am I audible? You are. All right. So, um, apologize ahead for any fat fingering because this is kind of like something that we've just put together last night over the weekend. Uh, but we just wanted to get kind of like get some feedback so that we can make the changes necessary. Uh, and Steve's script that he just showed kind of like walks through the idea. So I still want to just look at it more like an idea and not like any implementation per se. All right, so first things first is uh, we've set up uh, like um, one uh, instance of the registry to kind of honor these uh, so-called referral APIs that can store signatures. Uh, and we're gonna use that registry to kind of like run the Docker commands against. Um, all right, so before I start with anything, there is a, hijacked command here called Daughtery, Docker Nodary, uh, which is right now it's it's got just a, a sign command on it. So we'll get through that right now. So first thing that I wanna do is uh, on this enable Nodary, all right? So this doesn't, hold on. work doesn't enabled uh, let's see maybe not this is a, you missing oh, the enabled sorry there we go so all this does is it creates a, a file um, two Docker MB2 or? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Where is this file? It's. So you need to show us, you don't have to show us where, just yeah, yeah. the fact that it's right so there. This is, this is just a backup of the file. Basically what you get is the NV2 is enabled and under that you specify, uh, I have a specific cert that can be loaded for verification. So this is a cert on the disk that needs to be present. Um, this cert has been acquired out of band and it has to be present in the specific location. That's what the whole, um, uh, the requirement of this uh, plugin is. Uh, so let me see. The next thing that I'm gonna do is, um, Steve, just give me a minute because if, uh, <laughs> if the file, no, if the file is empty, then the pull should fail, right? That's the whole idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to show an empty file. Otherwise it doesn't. Did you, did you do a push? Can we do a, a sign and push first though? Uh, sign and push. Yeah. Okay. So I just have a, a dummy Docker file here. And the idea is that, let's see. So this is my registry that I have. And then I'm gonna create an image. Uh, let's say whatever this is. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is the image that I'm gonna create. Let's build this image. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually sign this image, right? So for that, um, I need the certs. And in the certificate folder, I'll go through argument by argument. Basically, this is my key file, this is my cert file, and this is the image that I'm signing. And so, Hopefully this should generate a signature. All right. So this generates a signature. And then finally, when I push this,
and that nv2.azurewebsites.net. So basically what we did is we took the changes overall has been doing to distribution and just hosted that in an Azure website, just so we're, we have something to push to and not just have it on a local machine. There's no expectation this thing's going to scale to any limits. It's just <laughs> a sample registry implementation. So this is uh, going ahead and pushing the image followed by pushing out the signature. And then let's see if we can pull this thing. All right. So this one is because in the original file, I don't have the, um, the certificates in there. Let me see if this works. There are no certs installed in the original file. So that's why the pull is failing because I don't have any of the certificates. So let's go ahead and actually add the full path of the certificate in there. Hopefully it should work now. Sweet. Yep. So this is kind of the, the rough uh, flow. Uh, I'll, I think Steve can share the source to if folks just want to take a look at how this is implemented. Uh, there are a lot of rough edges on this, for example, how the commands have been mod I mean, wired up into Docker and things like that. But roughly, I think the, the idea is um, I, I think the idea is to address certain points of, hey, we need some kind of configuration. We need some way to pinpoint the certs. Uh, we need some way to uh, kind of like make sure that only if the certs are present in the policy can it be loaded. Those are the basic ideas that we wanted to show through. Um, I'm just handing it off for now. And uh, yeah, we'll take questions from there. Sweet, thanks, Sajay. Let folks digest that and let me know what you think. Thoughts? They actually got further. I didn't realize that they had done the um, config stuff as well, which is great. Just getting our notes here that I can. Yeah, the, the config can get like pretty complicated if we wanted to kind of like say this repository or this registry uses only this certain things like that. Right now, we just assume that it's applicable machine-wide for all registries and things like that. So that's definitely an area where we don't know uh, how you want to narrow the config down, that I want to use only this cert for only this image maybe. Uh, that's kind of how maybe you want to uh, ensure that just because a cert is present in the list, that all images don't get validated against the cert and things like that. And I just pasted effectively what he did into the meeting notes. No questions? Okay. So the, the thought process is just, this gives us, you know, remember we're doing that model approach. Right? This isn't the final thing. It's, hey, here's a model of what we're building. And as we're staring at the model, we're finding the rough edges and deciding what we want to fix before we go and, you know, write the blueprint and build the full thing. So the, and I think, Sajay, is this still hacked together with uh, bash scripts? No, the source actually uses uh, the packages 
that um, you can. It, it's it's a it's a single go binary at this point. Oh, cool. I just shared you the. Oh yeah, I do see that. Yeah. So. Um, all right. It's there's a. We'll get we'll get this posted up. I'll just share it for here now. Let me just share my screen again. Screen two. Is that screen two? There we go. Um, so it's got you know this set of code. So the idea is this is just the latest model that we have. Um, it allows us to start testing some end-to-end -end experiences while we continue to iterate on some of the things like the APIs uh, that we want to do for distribution. So there's been a couple of good sets of feedback around how we want to do the, the lookups and the persistence, and we'll um, continue to go down that path while we have this you know kind of branch enabling some scenarios. What I'd like to do is the Harbor folks have offered to help, you know, where can they help? So they were gonna help with likely some kind of Go client that we could actually enable this, whether we actually take this to the next level with uh, a Docker extension or container D. Ultimately, what I'd like to get to in this sketching is the ability to have an OPA policy on a Kubernetes cluster uh, implement some very primitive set of uh, uh, validations. The idea is we wouldn't yet do the more complex stuff that Marina was talking about. It would literally be like, you know, in fact, he's already gotten further than I thought with this configuration file. But basically, if, a, if a, at least one signature exists locally, then uh, it would be considered valid. Even the key acquisition would be, you know, extremely lightweight at this point. I, I was looking at what Ian and Niaz have been working on uh, and there's some great progress happening there and there's some good questions around key rotation and others. So we'll continue to have that also you know, converge um, so that we can keep on seeing these pieces come together. So with this, I'm hoping with this, we can actually start engaging the OPA folks to start implementing a policy um, so that they can start testing that and give us feedback. And then what we'll do is, you know, with that functioning, we'll start looking at the underpinnings and look at, you know, how we would change the distribution APIs and propose there. All right, that makes a lot of sense to me as a path forward, kind of yeah, making a minimal working thing and then adding all the pieces. If we have a little extra time today, I have a, a quick thing I wanted to show, kind of um, circling back to some of the conversation we had today and earlier about, um, how to balance the client configuration with some defaults um, on the uh, registry side. So if we have time, I could. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that was that was all I had, other than just giving room for people to digest and have questions. But we got plenty of time. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I don't want to interrupt that if anyone else has questions here. So, Sam, Justin, anybody? I don't recognize. FGO I don't have any questions other than I can you can you uh, make sure all the links are in the yeah I mean, like have a look. Sorry, are you okay with I make this available? Yeah, it's public. It, it's it's just a prototype at this point. Okay. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. But I just wanted to just take a look. Um, Here we go. I just paste it in the hack MD so this way we don't worry about losing. Great. And Sam, questions are too early for you. <laughs> Sam's always reminding me that it's also early. Or he might be busy. OK. And I'm sorry, I don't recognize FGO Farav. Hello, uh, Furkat here from Ericsson. Uh, we're pretty new to the project, and we're just following it. So yeah. Well, welcome. Thank you. If you want to um, just, if you sign in on the Slack channel, uh, sorry, no, sorry, the hack doc for your name, I won't sound so stupid. And even if when I forget, I can go. Sure. Look at notes. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, great. Yep. Thanks. Oh yeah, you did. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong week. Uh, oh, and I was putting, I just noticed I put the notes in the wrong ones. Let me fix that. All right, Marina, why don't you take the floor while I fix my notes? Okay, cool. I'll go ahead and share. It's just basically just a diagram that I've made. Nothing too elaborate. Um, so you can, can people see that? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so basically the idea here is just an, it's a kind of a simple idea about how to 
split up um, a little bit of the key management and a little bit of the um, delegation, specifically for things like private repos or other things that don't want to be delegated directly from the, the registry, while also supporting um, default things in the registry for kind of public projects where that's not as much of a concern. So the basic idea here is you have the, the, the you know the basic tuck rules on the registry, and we'll ignore timestamp snapshot for now because I know there's some discussion about how to um, make sure that those are protecting the privacy of repositories and we'll we can get back to that I think at a, a future point but the idea here is basically that you have the you have a root key on the registry and then this could be distributed to clients you know using an out-of-band process and the whole key management discussion I think comes in there about how to distribute that and then that delegates to this targets role which then delegates to any public repositories um, that you want to be you know available for anyone who has access to the registry or just that aren't um, you know, where it's not like secret where they are, just to make it easy to find and, and access. And then the client can, can alter, alternately, they can either just use this target, access these repos, use the keys that are, um, are specified there, or they can specify their own targets file. So they could still use this route on the registry for things like timestamp snapshot or any other general properties, but then they could use this targets here, kind of as the configuration you were talking about where you just have where you list, okay, so these are the keys I, I want to trust for these particular repositories. And it could additionally point to repositories that aren't publicly available on the registry, but they're like hosted on the registry. So this, the, you know, this week before is still hosted on the registry, but it's not like publicly available and you have like access control and all that backing that. But then this targets file would have the location of this repo for as well as the keys needed to sign it and any other information. And kind of an added benefit here is the client can do um, key pinning. So basically they can say, I trust this key for repo three. And then if the key changes um, on the registry, you know, with the key that the registry says is trusted for repo three, the client will still have this pinned key that's trusted. And so they'll, they'll say, oh, you know, this key changed. Do I want it to have changed? Um, you know, should I do anything or do I just need to update my key? Um, yeah, so that's kind of the general idea of this. I don't know if anyone has questions or anything. This is kind of a rough sketch mostly, but just wanted to share and get some feedback. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't address the case that, or at least not directly, and maybe it could be, but it could probably be adapted for the things that you might get from uh, the same repo from Hey Justin, I, I don't think it's me. I think we're all hearing you. Different drop out. registries. Um, yeah, my my. Yeah, I think you're cutting out a little bit. Right? Said my and cutting out. Sorry. I, I, um, Let me take your video um, away and you know, I'll quit mine also. And see if that helps with bandwidth. Um, is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering what we would do for the case where something was mirrored whether we would would the root key of the mirrored register same key target key for repo one like so if i move if i take something from docker official image key and that's signed through the root would would you resign that root in azure if you imported that content into azure or something um or how would you, we expect that to work? Or would the client have to always? Yeah, so I think what I would expect, and I don't know if this is just off the top of my head, so I'd-, I'd Override the target for these cases. But um, that like, for example, this repo one would always be signed by the same keys, like whoever's in, whoever at this company or this organization is responsible that would sign it. And then they would publish their public keys to the targets file or to the registry, which would then put it in the targets file. And then any mirrors could just copy that. And the mirrors could choose to use a different like root timestamp snapshot keys, but they would just de still delegate to the same repo one. Key. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they would, they would have to have a different root key, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I guess it's a question of whether, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of issues around 
what registries are going to prefer to do here, which I think okay, unclear at this point. Like, um, like which I guess we've got to work out, but okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think this doesn't like solve, I think, all of the, the issues because you still need um, you know, the registries to handle these things. You still need ways to host all of these pieces, which I think is what um, a lot of what we've been working on. But um, this is just my kind of quick idea about how to handle um, kind of the separation of concerns between um, how much the client, how much control the client wants versus how much you want to be automatically available and automatically working. Yeah. Interesting. I think the, the biggest piece that I'm still struggling to, that we just need to figure out is the. I mean, I, I, that's the question sort of comment I was trying to make earlier. I'm sorry, right. go ahead, Justin. I, I think yeah, I, I was just saying that what I was trying to say earlier was that I think that having a setup where the client can get a sensible default that works for a lot of staff not always be turned on is really valuable because that was one mm -hmm. of the the problems with the current setup is like most clients didn't know what to most clients didn't have a reasonable difference or they got one via trust on first use that was not um that was not easy to distribute to other people um um because there wasn't an idea, there wasn't a good idea, like how you know how many keys should be in it and things like that. So if, if we had some kind of thing where you could have a reasonable idea of a reasonable subset of a, a, a policy that's not a stupid starting point um, that you might still want to tweak, but um, at least would give you some benefits if you didn't tweak it, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, because I think one thing I see advantage I see here kind of over the Node V1 is instead of each repository having a route that has to be trusted on first use and kind of building that kind of issue in is that there's just this one single key that chains the automatic um, trust. And so if they can find, you know, one way to get one key with using the key management or whatever, um, they can then use that to build this automatic system. And then if they need more fine grain control, that can be built on top of it or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that makes it more like the kind of Linux package manager where you come install, you know, you you install the the Debian keys when you install Debian, but you can add other keys for other repos yourself. Um, but at least you've got something to start with that works for some stuff. And it's one, it's a key. Whereas the problem about distributing the keys for notary v1 that like even when we were distributing just the official image keys there were still hundreds of them which really made it very inconvenient to distribute them i mean i guess it you know even with like ca routes um which people do distribute there's only 30 or so of them but even then, the process of distributing those has been a bit, um, well, I guess it's made it easier by the fact there's only a small number of browsers and other places which have to, which have them, but and operating systems. But whereas here, we've got a much more diverse set of users. So I, I mean, I think what you're kind of describing is there's a great, there's a, a general place where there's nothing configured because I don't want anything yet. And then there's like the Docker scenario where it's a, you know, it's a specific stack that I'm choosing and the Docker client could know how to pull the Docker hub certs for the certified images, let's just say. But if I want to pull in the Wabbit networks or the Acme Rockets keys, there's a way to do that, but it's it probably not on by default kind of thing. Yeah, so like if you have like private repos, maybe you don't want those in the automatic default system. So you can have, you know, your own system for getting those keys and trusting those files. But mm -hmm. for anything that's just publicly available, um, you can just have a default system that makes it easy for everybody to um, 
to access all of the keys that they need and all the um, the delegations that they need in order to to trust those things just so that by default people are using some amount of security even if it's not quite as fine-grained so the thing that i would really you know as we split off parallel work streams is the the place that we got hung up on with the notary stuff and most you know others was the ephemeral client scenario because you know if you look at the notary uh, and tough update framework work docs they kind of say look this is out of scope kind of problem and it makes sense but we need to bring it in scope to figure out how do we securely take an ephemeral client and all of a sudden have some kind of time stamping information, know how to roll forward and roll back, or you know, so protect from rollbacks. So it, I guess I would encourage. Um, well, I think, think the, the benefit that. here is that this ephemeral client only needs to get this one, probably you know, this one root roll rolls keys. So they have to get maybe one or two keys to then um, develop this whole thing, which would then be, you know, which would be part of the key management solution and, and those ongoing discussions of how they would get those couple of keys. They could even be kind of hard coded into the configuration because there's so few of them. And then they can use that to build out all the keys they need by automatically. That's kind of the idea. Well, I don't understand the timestamp reference because my understanding is I need to have some timestamps so that when I pull an image, I know whether it was rolled back or, or not. Oh yeah, and that would be stored on the registry, yeah. Well, but if I'm pulling, if I have a client with no reference information and I pull from the registry, then if I've hacked the registry, assuming I've hacked that too, so. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, so the client does still need a way to get these root keys, which then delegate to things like timestamp, et cetera. And that is definitely something that we need to solve. That's a really important point. And uh, That's what I'm saying is that yeah. would be a great area to focus on and how do we do, what, what is the proposal on how a client can build up some kind of state in a standard way because it shouldn't be, here's how you do it in Azure, here's how you do it in AWS, here's how you do it in Google, blah, blah, blah. It's, here is the way that you do it. And by the way, in my environment, I get it from this location, but all of the APIs are the same. So that would be a really good. There's kind of two main options, I'd say there. The one option would be to hard code the root public keys um, into the configuration files for the ephemeral clients. And then those root public keys, like you only need like a couple of those and they can be used to establish trust in everything else on the registry. Or alternately, you can- How does that establish trust in it that solves the public stuff, but it, like in, in the Acme Rocket scenario, I need to get the Acme Rockets key to know that, and my Acme Rockets registry. Oh, got it. You mean in, in, this, in the, this scenario where you're doing the non-default configuration? I, I'm not sure what you mean by non like, I, I think that this is the, case where we continue to be too heavily focused on public registries, which we're continuing to see those are great sources, but that's not where I run my workload from. Yeah. So like if you wanted to get like, yeah, the Acme Rockets or some other private repository keys that wouldn't be stored on the registry, you would need this. Yeah. You would need those to be stored in some file and downloaded using something like the key management solution that I know Niaz and, and folks have been working on, which I think would, would work pretty well for getting that in like kind of an out of band way, out of bound secure way. Yeah, I, I think there's a reasonable argument around key management for private repos and it's public content where we want to um, pre-distribute known, known content probably. But for private stuff, you, arguably you want full control over what you trust around your own private content and the, you're not going to delegate that to someone else. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm, I'm asking, can we get someone to focus on that and say, here is what you should do so that when the update framework folks are looking at the, like, yep, I agree that you've actually got rollback protection with this flow and not wave handing, hand waving and say, yeah, as long as the keys are there, you can do it. It's like, no, 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 no. It's a, it's a brand new client. What is it that the customer, the, the user has to do to be able to get that in a trusting state? Yeah, so they have to have the root keys and then they use the root keys to look at the snapshot um, file and verify the signatures of the snapshot file, which then tells you the, um, the current state of the, the registry and all the repos on it. 
It's the, the general idea. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm not asking us for to, to list it out exactly in this call because I, I think there's a lot more work to be figured out. I'm just saying that is the scope is I've got a brand new client. Walk me through step by step the APIs that and what would be extracted and configured for how a user would get a machine into a stable state. And that would be the great, you know, just kind of like I've been, you know, we've been mocking out here's how you sign and push and discover and pull images to a registry is how would, and we're completely punting the key, how it gets to there. That would be great to see. Here's how we can do this with the update framework on taking that same empty client and getting it into a reliable state. Yeah, I'm happy to map that out and share it with everyone. Awesome. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't have any promises on what we'll get done this week because we've got a couple of things going on. Um, I'm hoping that I'll get some time with the OPA folks that they can start getting that end to end part of it going. And I'll check with Sajay and Avaral and Shiwe and see how we're doing with the um, distribution API updates to kind of rev that under the covers. In theory, the experience that we just showed wouldn't change. It would just be when somebody who cares is looking at the distribution API stuff, they go, like, oh, I like that better. That is what we talked about. It's not as many round trips and it's got the configuration and persistence that we'd like. So that's what we're trying to do is reinforce the walls behind the demos that we're looking at. And if there's no other questions, we'll end a few minutes early. And um, I'm just trying to remember how to pronounce the person from Erickson's name because I wanted to say thanks for coming. So I guess I just said what I intended. <laughs> so thank you folks and we will see you next week.